All right. Welcome back, YouTube. This is Tim Kane on playing games. Do it. If you are a game dev, please do it. Your six OST in the watch again section. Those are the good, good, good OSTs, and they don't block me on YouTube. So let's jump in. Hi, everyone. It's me, Tim. Hi, Tim. Today, I want to talk about playing games. Yeah. Now, probably one of the most frequent questions or question types I get on this channel is people want to know what games I've played or have I played a particular game or will I play a particular game and live stream it or have I played a particular mod or have I played a particular tabletop game and what I think of it. Here's the, here's the really unfortunate part is that nowadays it is becoming increasingly difficult, especially if you have a job, to play all these games that are coming out. And Tim, being a man that, I, I think he's really passionate about games. I imagine he still plays games. I don't think he's going to stream them because it's like he's retired, right? Making these videos, this is a way for him to make a little bit more money and share his knowledge so that he, I don't know, you know, maybe he just wants to share it because he's out of the picture now, right? But I think it's really ridiculous. I don't know, people expect him to like, hey, go stream this new game that's out. It's like... Do you know how much effort it takes to stream for like hours and hours and hours? And I get that he doesn't have to do hours and hours, but it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work and it's a lot of energy. Um, and I understand why people are asking me that. You, you've played it and you either really like it or really hate it for some of you and you want to talk about it. Yes. And I get that. But I like the doing primary that. goal of this channel, as I've said multiple times, is I want to talk about what game development is like mm -hmm. and what my experience with game development is like in case you're thinking about going into game development or you're in game development. Because there are just a lot of That's issues us. that arise and you find yourself second guessing yourself. You think you're alone in all this. And I want to point out you're not. He's I've had right. some of the same doubts, some of the same issues. But I get still why people keep asking me well, what about this game? What about this game? Because it's relevant to what we're talking about. And I did an entire video on why I will not review games. And you may want to check it. It's at the link below. And one of the reasons I just want to remind you is it's the same reason I don't like talking too much about current industry events is when I'm done with this channel, and I don't know when that's going to be. Hopefully it's years away. I want it to be timeless. I don't want it to be filled with things where people are like, oh my God, he's talking about that game that's 20 years old. I mean, when I talked about the, my favorite games of all times, people were saying, well, these games are really old. And I'm like, yeah, they're my favorite games of all time, not last week. I, I get what he wants to do. I don't know if you can ever, I think he wants to be as timeless as possible. But, you know, a lot of the experience that he talks about with the industry are related to his time period and i'm not trying to call you old tim but you know it's like it's it's an ever it's a changing industry it's very very fast uh, evolving and it's up to you i'm not going to tell you that you should or shouldn't review games but i don't think there's anything wrong with it you know i don't i don't think people are going to say oh this is a review of tim's this is tim's star wars outlaws review from five years ago oh it it isn't relevant anymore unsubscribed it's like no it's it's a review from five years ago and that's that, that, that those were his thoughts at the time that he played it so i don't know maybe maybe he sees it that way but i think that youtube is a bit more understanding of it saying that this is this is dated and that is okay it doesn't have to do with yeah maybe like a, a different channel i agree with you true nightmare but it's up to him, right? I'm, I'm just saying that I don't think he has to worry about that if, he, if that is one of the, the biggest worries. The other reason I don't review games is I did a video with my favorite chocolate. And in that video, I linked to my chocolate website, which has a review of every chocolate I've eaten since I've 1993. I've seen that, yeah. Yeah, I've seen that. Pretty funny. Not only are they in there by brand and... Uh, name of the chocolate, but the, you can also search by country, by year. He's got to put that into a book. Um, by how, by what type of chocolate it is dark, white, rose. You can also search whether or not this is something that I got as a gift or I bought or whatever. So there's a million ways to search, but there's a search bar right at the top that you can just go, like, you can type in the name of the chocolate and see all the reviews I have. 
Despite that, I still got asked repeatedly in that video, well, have you had this bar? How, how about this one? What do you think of this? And I'm like, I started answering some of them by going to my site, finding the review and, and posting the link. After a while, Shouldn't I stopped do that. doing that. I, I literally could not keep up. So there's no doubt in my mind based yeah, on that. It's, it's like at a certain point, don't cater to the people that don't want to do any work, right? Video that even if I started to review games, that would be a never ending task. It would never, I would, that's all I would do is play games and review them. And it would be filled with what, why don't you play this game? What about this one? What about that one? Okay. He's so right about that. On this video, yeah. to talk about playing games in general. I want to talk about just that. I mean, it's obvious that you guys play games or you probably wouldn't be here. Although some of you said you don't play games and you still like being here anyway. And that's cool. But what I'm going to talk about is playing games playing in general. Games? If your goal is to play every game that has come out. <laughs> it's not going to happen. <laughs> I don't think anybody has that anymore. It no. is impossible. I think people have shown that you, you literally can't play every game on Steam. Because the number of Steam games out there, the number of hours estimated to play them, is longer than the average person's lifetime. And that's if Yeah, I mean, if we go to Steam right now, I, I, I mentioned that too. Uh, that's stream. Where's Steam Store? Although, you know what? I'm going to open up an incognito because uh, the website version has my private account on there. It's not private, but my personal account. And I may or may not have 18 plus games enabled to be seen on my personal account. And I don't want to take that risk. Well, look at the games that are just coming out tomorrow. September 20th. Look at the, September 19th. Today. It's all these games. All of these. I mean, these aren't all games, right? Some of them are DLC or like soundtrack. Let's filter. Let's just show games. Hold on. I can, I can do that, right? Show just games. And we're still looking at these games that are just coming out today. And if we look at tomorrow, we have, oop, not that one. All of, <laughs> all of these. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I mean, there's, it just isn't, I, and I like to see this in some respects, although there, this is a whole different topic of, is this good for the industry? Is this good for the developers that we have this many games coming out? And more likely than not, only one of these will probably earn more than a thousand sales. That's a different topic. That is a different topic that I don't know if we could ever come to a consensus on. But it is worth talking about. There are way too many games coming out, if you ask me. It is very difficult to, to balance this, to cater, um, to curate... But he's right. It's going to be impossible to play these games. Most games will never be known. Nope, they will not. And most of them won't receive more than, like I said, a thousand copies. A thousand sales for a smaller indie game is, is a lot. A lot of them won't even receive half of that. If you never slept or ate or worked and you just sat at your computer and played games all day. Yeah, it's impossible. Which sounds like awesome. But anyway... You, could, you still couldn't do it. And that is discounting the fact that new games are constantly being put into the Steam library. So then some of you go, well, I'll just play every game in a genre. Like, I'll play every role-playing game. Good still luck. Still can't do that. There are just so many games, so many games coming out, even in a particular genre. So some of you may go, well, I'll play every AAA or every indie game. You still can't do that. It, you don't have enough money in your wallet to play every AAA game these days, let alone enough, enough time. In fact, I have more time than I have money to play AAA games. Usually, AAA games cost more dollars than they have hours in their game. It's gotten that big. The industry is that big. You just have to accept that you're not going to play every game. You don't have the time, but you also you can't discover it. I did a whole video on discoverability. You should watch on that. On why it's really hard to find games anymore. Games for you. Um I agree with and that. And I'm, I'm talking, when I say good games, I do mean good games for you. I did a whole video on, you know, what bad games are. But it's all subjective to you. So when you're trying to find something that's good for you, there's just so much out there. And it's hard to 
discover them. And not only that, but besides Steam, there are other storefronts, and they're all jammed to the gills yes. with games. Part of the part of the problem is with new with all these free game engines, everyone's making games. Yep. So which is I a want good, to talk about which is a good thing in general. It's it's great that the and the barrier to entry to make games has been lowered so much that it's very accessible. You know, back 10, 15 years ago, you had some engines available to you, but if you weren't a programmer, um, and like a really good one, you more likely than not wouldn't have been able to make anything of, of any actual value. And Game Maker, things like Game Maker, which were, you know, modular, friendly to beginners, these were just getting started and they you couldn't really make anything of past a certain point in terms of like fidelity and ability. You really had to jump into existing engines like uh you know, Unreal 3 was really big at that point and that was an option or your Unity was just getting started too. But these were pretty basic. And nowadays the barrier to entry is is wonderfully low. But because of that he's right. It, the the also the the quality the the standard of quality for making games has the bar for the quality of games that are being released is much, much lower than I think that it ever used to be. And because of that, it is hard to find those games that are quality. I think Steam does a good job, but Steam's algorithm is also pretty, it's pretty harsh. And it, I think it has to be. But it is to the point where if you don't have a good following of, of wish lists and you don't have a publisher that can push that up, even if your game is good, you will not get the visibility from Steam's algorithm. That's just a fact. And that's why I tell indie developers, you can have a great game, but if you can't get the eyes on it and you can't get those wish lists up, your game will be shoved to the bottom with the rest of it by Steam, no matter how good it is. Simple as that. How that idea of you needing to play these games uh, maybe before you feel like you can talk about them intelligently online, you need to play a ton of them. Or, or if you're like me and you want to be a game developer. That's me. Well, if you're like me 40 years ago. You may fall into the trap of saying, well, I can't make any game in this genre until I play them all. That's not true. This is a complete trap. Yep. When I went to grad school in 1987 at University of California, Irvine, they told us that you'll probably get your PhD in five years. A few people did it in four. There were these prodigies that did it in three. But if you're coming in, especially like I did with a bachelor's degree, you're expected to earn a master's in a year and a half or two years, which I did, and then continue on for another three years to get your PhD. After another two years, I gave up. Tim, what if you don't have a high school degree? But I want to point out that just like people who think they have to play every game, there were several graduate students in my department information and computer science who had been there for six seven eight years and that kind of scared me because i did not want to still be there i was 21 i think i turned 22 right after i keep in mind when he says that that there's still some truth to that and there are that six seven eight years you could have spent learning programming learning game dev I, I agree with him that you, you do not need to play every game in a genre to start making games in that genre. But it helps because you'll have a frame of reference of standards and expectations. And that is important to delivering a certain features that, will, that are easy to make or easy to, to miss, actually, in a lot of cases, too, that will drastically change how people feel about your game. You, you don't have to play every game in a genre, but... You have to know what it is that this genre is is good at doing, what it's bad at doing, how you might be able to fill a niche for that. When I looked at potion games, alchemy games, I said, well, there aren't a lot of alchemy games that go deep into character, like lore and, and being able to change their fates. There aren't a lot of 3D alchemy games. Most of them are 2D. And a lot of the mini games in these alchemy games are 2D. They're, they're in a menu. And it's like, well, I want something that's a bit more personal. I want something that's a bit more personal, a bit more in your face, um, immersive, 3D, and you know, drag the ingredients in directly. 
that kind of thing. And and we can double down on that. We can say, okay, well, I've played other alchemy games. I've seen other alchemy games. They don't do these things. So playing all the games in a genre certainly isn't great, but playing games that are similar to the one that you want to make, that you envision, is great. And even if there are games that exist that are similar to yours, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You don't have to be first to be the best. You really don't. Make yours better than the ones on the market and people will play it. A good example is, I don't know, PUBG. And people made better PUBG. Now people play that. I got to UCI. I did not want to be at UCI working on my PhD when I was in my 30s. I either wanted to be a professor or maybe go back into games, which I did. When I talk to some of those PhD candidates, which some of my, the people in my cohort, that were the people who came in my year, and sometimes the year before and after, they were considered like the cohort. This is like the group that similarly, similar background, similar training, similar educational training. Some of them disparagingly called those grad students who had been there for eight or nine years lifers. And I was like, no, I'm sure they, they, they're working on something good. And, and maybe it's what happened to me where they, they picked a topic and then it got done by someone else. But it turned out several of them had this block, this mental block that they felt like they needed to read all the papers in their area before they could finish their thesis. And the problem with that is not only were there a ton of papers in their area, but they constantly, there were constantly new ones coming out. You literally could not put a pin in it and go, okay, and now I'm gonna write my thesis. Because while you're writing your thesis, more games or more white papers and conference papers and other PhD theses, theses, thesi, are going to come out. I think that's that's maybe it's almost like a fear. I think they fear getting started or they they don't know where to start. So the only thing that they know how to do is what they feel familiar doing. And which is arguably easier than writing your thesis is to read others. I, I don't know if it's as much that they feel that they needed to do that, but there might have been cases where that is true. But I bet a lot of the cases were that they were afraid to start and not know where to go from that. Like, uh, I mean, there's a lot of that, like with people who are making games, they don't know where to start. So they continue to like read books or watch tutorials on how to make games but then never get started on it and I, i've seen a lot of developers like that where instead of just making the game they're like writing all the design and the world lore and it's like how about you just how about you just make one of the systems just start prototyping stop writing your gdd for your game that you don't even know if it's going to be good yet and start prototyping to see if your game idea is actually good just do it. Just jump in and do it. The same thing happens in gaming. You may think, I'm not going to make a game until I've played all of them, or most of them, or the majority of the high-reviewed ones. But you can't do that. You can't wait. Because while you're waiting, Someone else new ones will games. come out. Uh -huh. In fact, once you start to make a game, new ones are going to come out. Yep. And it's very hard to not be swayed by them because a new one will come out. It's the new hotness. Everyone's like, ooh, you got to have multiplayer. You got to have microtransactions. You got to have this kind of game feature. And you're like, oh, I didn't design for that. Well, if you keep getting swayed by the new hotness of everything coming out, you're never going to finish your game. Star which, Citizen. Which I think happens. <laughs> the other thing I want to remind people is there are people out there who make reviewing games their jobs. That's what they do 100% of the time. I like watching Mortismal Gaming because Mortem has made it 100% his job. He 100% games, which I like, but it's it's all he does. That's his job. He does it full time. And he still does it 100% every game coming out. or every. I, I think 100% in games, though, is a dangerous... That's, that's a dangerous thing. I, number one, I don't think you need to 100% a game to say if, you, if, if, if it's good or not, in your opinion. But I also think that there are a lot of games where they are not fun to 100%. And if you don't 100% them, you will have more fun with the game. Yes, that's a problem with the game's design. If you want to make that your whole thing of 100%ing games to review games, 
at the 100% mark. More power to you. I appreciate that because I'm a completionist. And you can tell me, hey, yeah, this game is fun, but don't 100% it, right? Like Hogwarts Legacy. Fun game. 100%ing it. Don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. It's a waste of hours. The RPG or every AAA RPG. There are just too many. And there's also a ton that came out decades ago that I don't think he's ever going to get to. But there's another thing to think about here. I like Mortem. I like a lot of critics out there. But critics don't necessarily make good game directors. No, they don't. In fact, I'd say that those are two very different skill sets. And the Venn diagram of good critic and good game director is a very thin overlap. Well, good critics also don't make good game players. I mean, look at modern games journalism. And I know that I'm going to catch some flack for this if this ever gets clipped and released. But I 100% believe that game critics are sometimes really, really, really out of touch with what players want and how players feel. If you want to know if a game is good or not, go read Steam reviews. Simple. It's not perfect, but it's by far the best example you're going to get. And think of it this way. A, a game critic is often paid to make a review. I'm not saying that they're paid to, to review the game well, but that is their job. They get the game, in many cases, most cases, for free, play the game up to a certain point, and have to write a review by a certain point. So what happens then? They don't have any investment into the game. They didn't have to pay $80 for Skull and Bones. The players whose money is being taken from their wallets are the ones who have to determine, hey, was this game worth that $80 value that I was being asked to pay? Is my life as a stay-at-home dad, you know, watching a family of three while the wife is out working, it was this worth my time and effort? Not am I being paid and given a free game to set aside time during work where I still have time after work to do whatever I want to play this game and did I like doing that? That's a very different experience than the average player's experience and the what you're asking that player to do, which is take to take time out of their free time and take their own money and spend it on that game. And if you want to know if that was that game was worth it or not, read Steam reviews, not critic reviews. There are some good critics that I think do a very good job. Most of them, nah. Kotaku, no, definitely not. <laughs> so your idea of I'm going to have to play every game and get a good idea of what, all, what these games have is flawed from the start. Not only you're not going to be able to do it, even if you could, playing all those games won't guarantee you're going to be a good game director. Nope. In fact, I think I better make a video about taste, but I better make that a fun Friday one because subjectivity is subjective. But anyway, yeah. so my what is TL a good game? Well, whatever you find good. Play games. Play games to enjoy them. Play games to learn things. Do not pretend for a moment that you're going to play all the games that are out there or all of them in a genre or even a subcategory of a particular genre. And if that's what's holding you back from making a game or starting your game or finishing a game that you've already started, understand that you've fallen into a trap and you just need to ignore it. Make your game. Yep. Eventually, people will grow if you have a really good, like, your own flavor. People want your game. Not a game that looks like it has features pulled in from something else. So, that's my advice. Play games, but don't be trapped by the idea that you have to play all of them. Yeah, very true. Another, uh... <laughs> okay, don't ignore that. 100% um, true. Yeah, that was a great... Uh, another great video from Tim here. I couldn't agree more on that. It can all really just be boiled down to go make your game. Go make yours. Go make yours. It's okay to draw inspiration, to combine ideas from different games. That's how we, that's how we evolve. That's how art... Uh, you know, progresses like that, go do it. Stop, you know, don't get in the trap. Don't believe that you are not as capable as somebody with, you know, who's played a billion games in that genre. Just go make your game. Go put your spin on it. Sometimes the best games have come from people who got into game dev from some other part of life. You know, they were a construction worker or something, and then they taught themselves how to code and made their own game and now it's got this flavor in it that doesn't come from somebody who has been maybe i don't know tainted by 
this this kind of this industry culture, right? You know, we I guess we if you can get too blindsided or a bit too a bit too much tunnel vision if you're in game dev too long that oh this is what it has to be. This is how you sell, right? And that's why juniors are great to add to a team because they'll bring in those fresh perspectives. They aren't tainted yet by you can't do this or you shouldn't do this. They'll they'll just say it raw. They'll say, hey, wouldn't this be a cool thing to add to the game? And it may not be feasible, but it may spark that inspiration to go further. So here's a link if you guys want to give it some more thought. And if you're watching on YouTube, thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.